this is Mike Dilt with the Relax Back UK Show. On the Relax Back UK Show, we explore all kinds of health topics, so keep listening and enjoy the ride. Hi, and thank you for joining me, Mike Dilk, on this week's Relax Back UK show. My guest this week is Jessamine Stanley, and I absolutely love talking with her. She is co-founder of a yoga company called The Underbelly. She was invited to speak at the Fortune Most Powerful Women Next Generation Summit. She really is no slouch, this lady. We spoke about a lot of things, including why many people in wellness-type ads and media don't look like me, or hardly anyone at all really it when you look at the wellness field like it's very homogenous and very um there's a lot of aspirational thinking it's a lot about like you're not good today but you will be good later and i think that because the underbelly's mission is so counter to that that fortune sees that as something that they want uh, to be a part of their community. And I feel really grateful that we are seen in that way and really recognized and feel really grateful to be a part of a wellness community that is evolving. Jessamine just seems to talk some sense, not just yoga sense, but life sense. Even without stepping on a yoga mat, the yoga of everyday life, seeking balance in the struggle moments of life, that is the way that I have been able to accept the different parts of myself that feel unacceptable and um, and really how I've been able to come home to myself in a lot of different ways. So please do join me and Jessamine on this week's Relax Back UK show. Thank you. So I had told Jessamine that I wanted to ask her about yoga and her company the underbelly however there was something else that i wanted to do first but first of all right I, i've been doing a bit of digging in fact you could say a bit of electronic stalking <laughs> okay <laughs> yeah wonderful i love i love a little electronic stalking yeah it's yeah wonderful and um i came across you made a, a, a vlog kind of a video of some time that you spent at something called the fortune next gen summit mm -hmm. and uh, it looked pretty interesting it was quite a, in quite a swanky hotel and um and i just want and i think you presented there so i i was thinking oh i wonder what jessamine was talking about there and what it was all about so first of all because i'm essentially quite nosy just can you tell us what that event was all about and what you were talking about Totally. You know, I was so honored to be asked. It was the Fortune Most Powerful Women Next Generation Summit. And it was in San Diego, San Diego, California, which is like one of my most favorite parts of the world, if I'm being completely honest. Like, have you, I don't know if you've ever been to San Diego, but it's just like hot all year round. It's very, very nice there. And I, I have um, actually you're right. Been it was San Diego. Yeah. 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 It's like really, I, it's very uplifting, I think. But um, it was at this like, massive golf resort i don't remember what it was called but i do i was very excited to be there to talk about like the evolution of wellness really and how yoga is accessible to anyone and everyone regardless of what you look like and how especially and specifically for like powerful women it's really important for us to prioritize our wellness as a part of our business so that if you are practicing mindfulness and taking a moment for yoga that's really like a part of your work life as much as it's a part of your personal life and that's something that i experience personally as a yoga teacher yes but also like as a business owner and especially as my company the underbelly scales and we are <clears throat> a wellness community that is available all over the globe and really being in that kind of professional space has made me recognize just how important it is to maintain my personal practices as a service to my business so it was right. really cool to be in that space and talking about that and like and to see wellness be valued in that way okay that's good but i guess what i was really getting at is 
you had to get invited to this thing. You didn't just apply. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so the, the whole fact you were invited, because they don't just invite anyone, do they? I, you know, I suppose not, but I think that um, because the underbelly is such an unusual resource and we we're a community that like we offer yoga and other wellness classes as a way for anyone who has ever felt marginalized to see themselves and to feel empowered and to feel like it's possible to do anything that you want. But when you look at the wellness field, like it's very homogenous and very, um, there's a lot of aspirational thinking. It's a lot about like, you're not good today, but you will be good later. And I think that because the underbelly's mission is so counter to that, that fortune sees that as something that they want uh, to be a part of their community and I feel really grateful that we are seen in that way and really recognized and feel really grateful to be a part of a wellness community that is evolving yeah. and um, I think that when we look at like health and wellness you don't usually see fat black queer people like myself and so to me it feels like really really important for marginalized for companies that are helmed by marginalized voices to be in spaces like like a fortune for example sure sure okay well i mean a couple of things come out of that um first of all i, I mean in some ways i i get the same sort of feeling all right so i, I don't have a yoga company I, I i do yoga i've done yoga off and on for a while um so i, I i'm 56 now and i started doing a bit of yoga when i was about 20 or so so I, i'm not a great yogi by any means but i'm just a, a little more supple probably than your average paunchy middle-aged bloke but what always kind of surprises me and this isn't just for yoga this is all kind of wellness and fitness stuff if you if you look at the, the you know the adverts and the videos they're all beautiful 20 somethings and um you know i'm not a beautiful 20 something you know i've got a receding hairline i'm a bit fat and i'm 56 and it, i it, you know i look at all these things and i don't really feel included um and it, that strikes me as a bit odd it's i mean just from a marketing point of view you know not everyone in the world is right. a beautiful 20 something and then if you're going to be a bit more hard nosed about it most 20 year olds haven't really got any spare cash you know so <laughs> why market That's to them right. anyway it's totally <laughs> it's totally like fountain of youth obsessed culture and it's so unfortunate because we we define beauty the definition of beauty in the mainstream is so narrow it's definitely like young i would also argue that it is very white and very thin and very um very wealth centric also so there's always an emphasis on how much money you have and you're right that the paradox of all those things is that it's not inclusive of anyone who could really benefit from these different practices and i think that what specifically about yoga what's so tragic about that is that yoga is really for everybody it is it has nothing to do with what you look like i think the ideal would be to start practicing yoga before you're born when you're in the womb that your parent whoever is carrying you that they would be practicing yoga and then when you are born that you would then practice yoga your entire life so your body is going to change that's the one constant in this life the only thing that we know is that change is coming so it's really it's i think you're right like from a marketing standpoint it's particularly um devastating because it's like you're not even i mean the wellness industry is like a certainly billion dollar industry if not trillion dollar industry and if you're really going to try to make even more money it would make sense to be as inclusive as possible so i am um, i agree with you there completely and i think that um the one thing that um, that you didn't say that really strikes me so much about age is the wisdom that comes with age and even more specifically that the body wisdom that that offers so when you're young you're like obsessed with 
looking a certain way and like mm-hmm. doing like you want to do the most like complicated athletic gymnastics inspired yoga postures like and you want to be seen doing it and as you get older i feel like you're just happy that your knees are still working like you're not really (laughs) thinking about like anything beyond survival and the wisdom in that makes it possible to achieve things that a younger person does not have the patience for so i feel like there's this step that we miss with yoga specifically where it's like we really have to advocate for people of all ages to practice because it's something that the older you get i think the better (laughs) if there's an idea of better in yoga which there isn't but let's pretend that the your practice gets better the older that you are as opposed to the younger yeah i i I agree with an awful lot of that in fact probably all of it and and from a selfish point of view i might add one more thing uh, please and that is when you get a bit older, that's kind of potentially when you need it a little bit more because exactly you start right. to get a bit stiffer for whatever reason, just because you're older or maybe the odd injury starts to play up. So that is when you need to start moving a bit more. <laughs> exactly. Literally. That is precisely the case. And also just anytime that your body is changing, like there's so many different reasons that your body might change. And it, it could be a car accident. It could be pregnancy. It could be getting older. But like being able to just accept the change is really, I think, the challenging part because we get so attached to however, whatever's happening in the present moment. Or I think particularly when it comes to youth, we get attached to how we used to look or what used to happen. But being able to accept whatever is happening in the present moment is really the point of yoga. Like every posture, every breath, every meditation is just an invitation to sit in the moment and to just be. And so, yeah, uh, that's my long way of saying I agree with you. (laughs) Okay, so let's go to uh, uh, something slightly different, which kind of will demonstrate to you just how uh, shallow I really am. (laughs) So the reason I first started doing yoga, really, and that was probably when I was about 20, was to try and impress my then girlfriend, who's now my wife. Oh well, why? Why else would you do it? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you know that was that was a, a, at the time it was a good enough reason, and I'm still doing yoga, and I'm and I'm still married to her, so this is Absolutely. all good. But so what what got you along, kind of on the road of mm. uh, trying out yoga? Mm. Well, I was in graduate school in my early twenties, and I was going through a really hard time. Um, I talk about it a little bit in my book, Everybody Yoga, but I, so I'm not going to go into great detail about it right now, but I was struggling with the change in life that comes in your early twenties when you're like, who am I? What am I doing? Is this right? All of that. And, um, my friend, she was like, oh my God, you should come to yoga. You'll love it. It's totally going to change your life. And I was like, absolutely not because i had tried yoga when i was in high school and hated it it was like the worst experience and and honestly i really thought that yoga was just for thin white women i didn't think it really had anything to do with me but um she convinced me to go and when i went i found that all of the postures seemed impossible to me like even just to sit with my legs crossed felt very very challenging to me and I wasn't dressed like everyone else. It seemed like everyone else had gotten dressed together and practiced the routine ahead of time and that I was like the only person who didn't get the memo. So I'm standing there in this class like, and I was in a style of yoga where they use full length mirrors. So I was like looking at myself the whole time, which is something else that I didn't really do. Up to that point, I would really avoid mirrors and avoided taking pictures of myself because I was so ashamed of my body. But I was looking at myself in the mirror and everybody is practicing these postures and I would just be like, I can't do this. I don't even know why I'm here. I shouldn't even try. And then after a while, I was just like, you could just try. Like maybe you fall down and maybe everyone in the room is going to see that you don't know what you're doing. And maybe the teacher is going to see and you're going to be embarrassed, but you could still just try. And that idea of just try 
was like a foreign concept to me because I didn't realize it at the time, but there were so many parts of my life where I did not give myself permission to try. I said like, I can't do this. I'm not good enough. Why even bother? And I think that's a pretty common experience. I think that a lot of us shortchange ourselves before we even get give ourselves the chance to fail. And giving myself that chance to fail, to fall, to not do it right, was a huge spiritual opening for me. And it really, ultimately, I think, is why I still continue to practice yoga. Um, I think that, you know, life changes, life evolves. My life has changed tremendously since I went to that first class. But I still come back to my mat every day or thereabouts. And it's at this point, I do try to practice some form of pastoral yoga as often as possible. But even just even without stepping on a yoga mat, the yoga of everyday life, seeking balance in the struggle moments of life, that is the way that I have been able to accept the different parts of myself that feel unacceptable and um, and really how I've been able to come home to myself in a lot of different ways. Okay. But then you did a lot more than just be a yoga student you know you went from being a yoga student to which, which actually is quite a big deal can be quite a big deal and you it sounds Literally. like you certainly went on quite a journey that way and then you made a jump from being a yoga student to, to being a yoga teacher yeah so, i really i had never aspired to be a yoga teacher like i did not want to be a yoga teacher and i was sharing my yoga practice on social media and I had people asking me, like, come teach me, like, from all over the world. And I would be like, why do you need for me to come teach you? There are literally thousands of yoga teachers. And I would recommend other teachers. I'd be like, you don't need for me to come teach you, I promise. And um, I also, like, had not, like, I couldn't afford to go to training. There was just so much wrapped up in it. But when I did finally go to training, I realized why everyone should be a yoga teacher. And it's not because like there's one yoga teacher that we all need to follow. It's because everyone is going to process this practice differently. Like everybody's yoga is different from one another. Mm -hmm. And my yoga is not going to resonate for everybody, but it could resonate for even one person. And if that one person practices compassion for themselves and finds balance and finds their yoga, they might share the practice with even one other person. And that ripple effect of all of us practicing yoga together, in my mind, that's how we can shift our society from living in a space of fear to living in a space of love and compassion. Right now, as evidenced by everything that's happening in our world, we are living in deep scarcity fear mindset. Everyone is afraid. We're all like afraid of each other. We're afraid that like something, something bad could happen at any turn. And the reality is that that is just the truth of life. There's always something bad lurking around a corner. But there's also, the flowers are also always blossoming and blooming and the sun is still coming up. And being able to remember that, especially in times of great struggle, like we're in a time of great struggle, it's really important to be able to remember that. So that is where my teaching practice came from. And I didn't actually let you finish your question. So I don't know if that's what you were asking, but I just feel like I would never have become a yoga teacher had the universe not asked me to, because I really was not interested in it at all. Right. No, that, 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 that's interesting, actually, because it really sounds like you get, if anything, more out of teaching yoga than practicing it, you know, just enjoying mm -hmm. the fact that you're I nearly said spreading the word. I didn't want to, because it's not, it makes it sound like an evangelical religion, but just, <laughs> which it absolutely is not. Giving other people the opportunity to enjoy it as much, I guess, is probably mm. the best way of putting it. Yeah, I've always had a very complicated relationship with teaching because I feel like, um, I just don't, I, I really think that the most powerful teaching comes from living in all cases that it's not necessarily about like rhetoric and telling other people information it's really about embodying something for yourself and then if other people are inspired to live their lives 
in a way that is impacted by that, then that's great too. But um, I think that over time, teaching has become a very powerful practice for me. And certainly I think teaching online in particular and teaching online through a pandemic has been deeply educational about the human experience. And it has allowed me to see myself more um, robustly. So, yeah, I mean, but I think that the practice of yoga in and of itself is a teaching. And whenever we practice yoga, we're, being of service to our community like to take care of yourself in that way to look within yourself is a way of being in community with other people so yeah i do i think the teaching definitely is very impactful for sure yeah and but the teaching has kind of grown again in in some ways for you because now you know you're a co-founder of a company uh the underbelly so that's like another big step. You know, this is, you're not teaching a little bit on a Sunday afternoon or something. You know, this you 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 know you have created a pretty big, pretty successful company. So, um, are the requ- have you found that the, the actual practice of yoga has helped you run a company? Definitely. I I was just saying this the other day. I was like, yeah, I'm really living like the the yoga of business because I think that there is so much within entrepreneurship specifically, like when you're starting something and like lighting it on fire and you've got to like keep the momentum going, there's so much that's required in regard to replenishing yourself and replenishing your own cup. And coming back to some form of neutral or balance or at a minimum accepting that 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 does not exist because i think that um in a given day so like i'm a yoga teacher i'm an author i'm an advocate and all of wearing those different hats on any given day they can they conflict with one another and there's a lot of like chaos that comes along at the at the center of those intersections and i think that practicing yoga and that's really why my practice has become so stringent over the years that like like i used to be like oh i'm not going to practice yoga every day or oh i'm not going to practice yoga i like i don't have to practice for i could only practice for like a breath or like a few breaths and I think it's true that like even a breath can make all the difference even one posture can change your life but for me to be able to wear all of the hats and go all of the places and do all of the things and really be present to my team and show up for at to be of service to the company I have to live the practice a hundred percent and it feels like gratifying and solidifying it makes me feel strong and present and um and it makes the main reason though i think is because of what we were talking about before change and how change is inevitable and especially in business it's just always coming who saw the pandemic coming who saw like i mean who saw well i guess a lot of people saw it actually that's really the trick is that many people saw it coming but uh, who saw a full-scale quarantine where like we would all be inside so being able to like rock with the roles and just go with it so when when did you start the business oh my goodness well we technically launched in 2019 okay we started the the underbelly has been in motion since like 2017 2018 and um initially we launched as a standalone app and then over time we transitioned to vimeo which allowed us to be able to stream our content on basically everywhere that you can stream. So like Apple, Roku, um, Amazon, Fire, like every, all of the different platforms through our expansion, we're able to offer services. And then in addition to that, our um, we've just recently launched on YouTube where you can subscribe directly to the underbelly on YouTube. Okay. But yeah, um, 2017, 2018 is when it started to come into fruition. 
All right. So it wasn't long after that, in the terms of like length of a business, that you were you know clobbered by COVID. So <laughs> did oh yeah, what happened there? Exactly. Um, right. Exactly. Literally. Yeah. Well, it was a very interesting time, and um, I think that it was it was very interesting that we had a digital wellness company launching right at the time when everyone couldn't leave their house. So it was really cool to be able to connect with our community as everyone. I mean, it was maybe, maybe it's not obvious, but it was a very, um, it was a great time for us to really dig in and settle into our community and start to see and understand what they need and why someone would practice yoga at home alone. Right. And um, I think that that was something that we're still learning from. And I think that the, hmm, I think that it is very powerful to be able to ride with the waves with this. Yeah. So does 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 the underbelly does it prov does it provide as well as providing yoga lessons does it provide a community you know because if you, if I go to a yoga lesson and you know there's a few people there what happens is you get a bit of chat before and a bit more chat at the end and you know it is a social occasion well for me anyway you know because uh, you can probably tell because I'm a bit of an old gossip but so. Do you, do you try and emulate some parts of that in what you provide online? Exactly. So, and, and we try to do that and more because a lot of times if you go to a live studio class, if you're not particularly extroverted, you might not connect with people at the class, mm -hmm. but at the underbelly, because we are online, there's a lot of different opportunities for being in community with people that are not quite as emotionally difficult as being in person can sure. be. And we are, I'm so excited now that quarantine um, is like lifting. I'm so excited for us to start doing live classes as well. But um, through our Instagram and Facebook, and then also on the app itself, we fostered a community where that is very unique because it is so many people that you wouldn't typically find in yoga classes. Like if you go out to just like your average run of the mill studio, it's likely that it's gonna reflect the wealthy population of your town, like more so yeah. than anything else. And that doesn't mean that like, it's like, it could be racially diverse, it could be size and age diverse, but it's gonna be like a very specific community of people. And like being able to be in a community like the underbelly where everybody is a little bit weird everybody is a little bit fat a little bit old a little bit tall a little bit different everybody is different to some degree or identifies as marginalized it's just a really unique homey community and wow. our live classes that we teach online so i was saying that i'm looking forward to us doing live in-person classes but every month we teach a live class we actually our next live class is tomorrow what is that that is uh, February 23rd. Um, yeah, every month we do a live class and those are really cool because that's where everyone can like really come together and chat in the comments and like be in space together in a way that I think when you're practicing, you know, like your individual underbelly class on your own in your home, you kind of miss that little bit of community. But so, uh, we... sorry, let me just interrupt. When, when, please, please. So, if, if a regular user uses the underbelly and they, they you know, they, they click on, is it a video that's already been made, which they then follow or do they have? Okay. Totally. So we have, we have over a hundred classes that you can like stroll through and take whatever strikes your fancy. And then every month, in addition to those classes, we have a live class right. that you can join in on. Right. And so for this live class, is this, how many people are there? Is it? I can imagine it might be a few hundred. 
Yeah, exactly. So it's like, it's a pretty good group and it's all over the world too. This class that we're doing tomorrow is our first class that will not be in the morning Pacific time. So I'm in Northern California and we are, um, we're like the last stage of the time zone, I think. But like this class tomorrow is going to be at 430 in the afternoon Pacific time. So mm -hmm. I guess where you are, that'll be like 930, 10. <laughs> like it's going to be kind of late. But um, for people like on the East Coast, it'll be like 730. I'm excited to see how that varies things. But we have people who join from all over the world, like right. Germany, different parts of Africa, South America, so many different places. Fantastic. And have you got an idea of which part of the world, which parts of the world are getting more interested more quickly? I do think that we are like we're we're definitely like a U.S. based company. And so we see yeah. a lot of people from the United States. But I'm always so excited by our growing community in um, in Buenos Aires. Like there's so many. Right. People, and also just like in brazil it's very interesting a very large group of people and also in different parts of europe definitely in germany there is a huge community of like there's a very vibrant fat positivity fat acceptance community in germany and um actually my first book everybody yoga is about to be published in german to that point so okay. yeah it's cool to see like all the different things but even just like as a teacher on my own I've taught kind of all over the place. And it's wild to me how like, if you're teaching in Singapore, it's the same as if you're teaching in Northern California, which is the same as teaching in South Africa. Like everyone, human beings are the same, no matter where you are. Everybody is just looking for love. Everybody wants to feel seen and everybody wants to feel heard. Sure, okay, very, that's very interesting. Let, let me ask you a question about the kind of, the type of yoga because i've been to a few different sort of yoga classes and uh, some are, are are very uh, precise and they you know the teacher likes you to do exactly the right thing in the right way and and i must admit those ones i i kind of like those ones i think it's partly because i'm a bloke and i'm an engineer and uh, i like to be you know relatively precise when i'm doing these things how how, how does it work on the underbelly Mm, so the underbelly is like most of our pastoral classes are like a vinyasa style. That's what I call it. Vinyasa is like linking breath with movement. And typically vinyasa style is pretty quick paced. And um, there's like, you know, it's not I think that in a lot of vinyasa classes, the idea is to get it right. This is the this is the order that we're going to go in like these are the postures, but the whole ethos of the underbelly is do your thing. Your thing might be practicing corpse pose for the entire class, your thing might be watching the class and then practicing it later like it might be that I've said downward facing dog too many times and you don't feel like doing it because really the point of practicing yoga on the underbelly is to find the teacher that lives within you. And that means not necessarily listening to what the teacher on the screen is saying. Mm -hmm. And that kind of agency, I think, really encourages everyone to be even more adventurous in their practice whenever you feel like it's OK to it's OK to fall down. It's OK to change your mind. It's it's important to listen to yourself and. Um, the but yeah a lot of just like functionally a lot of the classes are vinyasa style and we also have meditation classes as well all right very nice i've got to say i'm not surprised that it's taking off because just in the in the me talking to you for the last 20 minutes or so has made me think yeah i should i'd like to do some more yoga i mean i i, I do i do it once a week but i'm thinking you know i'm nice i should do more and so yeah. you obviously have this kind of infectious um excitement um persuasion whatever whatever you call it so if, if people are listening and they've you know they've got this persuasion or what have you from you and they're thinking hmm i would like to find out a little bit more one way or another whether it's checking out your website how how can people um do that what's a good what's a good resource for them or a good thing for them to do 
Absolutely. You can find me at jessamanstanley.com. And I want to spell it for you because I know it's like, it's like, what did she say? J-E-S-S-A-M like monkey, Y-N like Nancy, Stanley, S-T-A-N-L-E-Y.com. And there you can also get a link to, that's where you'll find everything about my books, Everybody Yoga and Yoke, My Yoga of Self-Acceptance. You can find um, my podcast, Dear Jessamine, and um, everything else that I do. But in addition to that, you can also get a link to The Underbelly, which is also at theunderbelly.com. And The Underbelly can also be found in the app stores of um, Apple and Android. So if you're just like on your phone and you want to look it up, you can go ahead and download The Underbelly and you can sign up for a free two-week trial. Oh, and if you're looking for me on social media, you can find me at my name is Jessamine or at Jessamine Stan. Okay. So absolutely lovely talking to you. Thank you very mm-hmm. much. Same. Jessamine, I'm, I'm concerned we're going to get cut off very soon. Totally. So yes. if, if, if oh, we do, uh, uh, apologies, because I've only, uh, it lasts <laughs> for 40 minutes. But thank you, so, thank you so much for chatting. I really enjoyed chatting to you. And um, absolutely, it was pleasure my pleasure to meet you. Mike. Many thanks to Jessamine Stanley, my guest on this week's show. If you are listening to the show via the podcast option, please subscribe and like. And many thanks to you for joining us. And have a healthy week. Until next week. That was the Relax Back UK show with me, Mike Dill. Thank you for listening. And please do join us again next time. <laughs>